Hi, my name's Mike Sager, and I'm the Director of Safety and Student Services for Penn Harris Madison School Corporation. I want to share with you some things that you might consider in an immediate threat situation. Before we do that, let's hear from some of our school resource officers and firefighters that work for Penn Harris Madison School Corporation about their thoughts in an immediate threat. If someone were to hear a noise that they were unsure of, uh, the best thing to do is contact security as quick as possible, contact police as soon as possible. If it were to be a gunshot, gunshots very distinct, uh, they will know that it's a gunshot if that's what they're hearing. And again, if you go back into the shots being fired down the hallways and it's in close proximity to you, you don't want to leave that room. You want to basically go into a barricade mode, so you want to put stuff in front of that door to defend yourself and retreat back into that safe area inside that room. If by chance someone, a student and or a teacher were confronted by an immediate threat, uh, someone with a knife, someone with a gun, uh, most important thing to do is, is try to get away as quick as possible. Um, yell, scream, make noise. Um, if there's no other options, they might have to resort to uh, trying to take out that threat. Cover may be something that they cannot see you and that you cannot shoot through. Whereas concealment might be something they can't see you, but they have the ability to shoot weapons through. So you have to consider that when you're taking cover. So if I'm standing behind a bush, you may not be able to see me, but if I throw something through that, a baseball, or if I shoot around through that, it can still hit me. That's concealment. Cover means I'm behind something, you can't see me, but you're not going to be able to get anything through there to get to me. So if I'm standing behind a steel concrete wall, that's cover. If, if you're confronted with a situation where there is an active shooter or any other type of major event, the most important thing to remember is get out. Get away as, as fast as you can. You don't need your book bag, you don't need your computer, you don't need your phone. You need to get out as quick as you can and also be aware of the fact that there's going to be multiple agencies arriving on scene. You're going to have police, you're going to have fire. Uh, let them know what's going on also because they're coming into the situation fresh and you might have information that they need when they arrive. So I always tell people when going into a venue to be aware of your surroundings, to glance around to find out where's the fire exit, where are your, um, I call them the ADP, or ADs, it's the actual defibrillators, where's your emergency devices that are on the side of the walls and where's your fire extinguishers. That's for simple stuff. Also, the biggest thing is where's your main exits? How can I get out of here if something happens? Uh, when you come into a new situation, whether you're coming into a school, whether you're coming into an auditorium, basketball arena, anywhere, movie theater, first thing to do is check and make sure that you know where the exits are at. Uh, always be aware of your surroundings, always be aware of where you're at, and always have a plan to, to get out. So what do you do in immediate threat? Use the ADD principle, avoid, deny, defend. Avoid the threat wherever possible. Get out of the building if you possibly can. Deny access to that individual by going in behind locked doors if you have to. Get in and defend yourself at all costs. Uh, one thing I recommend to all the staff is to recognize whether you're in an inner room or an outer room. And what I refer to as an outer room in the building, you'd have a window in your room. There are some classrooms inside of Penn High School that has an inner room. It's just four walls and a door. So you have to now think of your, what are you going to do inside that room? And mostly it's going to become defend. So I've asked local fire officials to share the rescue task force and how they will work with police to attend to victims of an active shooter situation. The, the police and fire um, in a triage situation, we're going to work together in something that we refer to as the Rescue Task Force model. The Rescue Task Force model is a model that was created out of uh, the uh, aftermath of Columbine and Virginia Tech and several other uh, mass shootings around the, uh, the country. And what that model is, is the uh, police officers providing cover um, in the warm zone for the uh, fire and EMS personnel to go in and to affect the uh, safe treatment, triage, and transport of the victims that have been injured in the situation. And, and the staff could do some things 
in a situation, depending on every incident is different. Uh, again, they have to think of their own personal safety, the student's safety. But uh, if they're in a situation where they're not going to leave their room and they have some wound in there, they could attend to those victims. Primarily, the focus now is on major bleeding, uh, using a tourniquet, wound packing, simple things to stop the hemorrhaging of that victim because they can bleed out really quick. Furthermore, the police and the fire explain to us what we can do in a crisis situation and steps we can take to assist them. Uh, in an active shooter incident, there's going to be overwhelming amount of communication, cell phone, and you might not be able to get in. There could be a busy signal. There's other ways to do it. You can text, you can put notes, uh, use a marker and put a note up on the window to the outside because uh, the building will more than likely be perimetered very quick. The, the significance of the rescue task force training for the, the and Harris Madison school system is the fact you're going to get trained responders um, that are equipped with body armor and um, the, uh, the, the knowledge, skills and ability to provide treatment um, in a, the hazard zone as quickly as possible. Uh, we're trained as we come into a situation, even where we're going to park our fire trucks to possibly be a safe collection point for those students, staff that have evacuated the building to stay there and where we could possibly gather information if we can assign an officer, fire officer, security officer, or whoever it is. Safety at PHM is our top priority. Knowing what to do in an immediate threat is important to you as well as every patron that visits Penn Harris Madison Schools. Thank you very much and thank you for thinking safety.